when we were doing uh, calculations for electrochemistry, especially about uh, electrolysis, sometimes we want to deal with the current and we want to be able to convert moles of electrons into, not into current, but we want to do that into coulombs, into charge. And then how does the current and the charge and time relate to each other? And then the units here, amps, okay, and coulombs. So coulombs is, you know, uh, for electricity, is kind of like the flow of water. So coulombs is the amount of water that is actually flowing uh, in a system out of a hose. And the amps is how fast, you know, the rate at which that uh, coulombs are flowing out. So the rate at which the water is going to flow. Now, when we're talking about uh, current, it turns out current is a little bit funny because it's, you know, it's a kind of a backwards thing. Uh, current is the flow of positive charge through a wire. Now, the wire itself, though, you know, is, actually has electrons going through it. So, for current, we would talk about the charge, positive charge flowing through, but that actually has to deal with electrons that are going the opposite direction. Uh, but we have a nice formula for that, and that is that the current that's in amperes, I, uh, is equal to the charge, okay, that's in, measured in coulombs, uh, divided by time. So what that also means here is that amps, when you see that, amps is equal to coulombs divided by seconds, coulombs per second. So a one amp circuit, okay, is the amount of uh, uh, energy that would go through, the amount of charge that would go through in one second. If you get one coulomb of charge in one second, that's one amp. Now, this whole idea here about, you know, the uh, flow of, you know, positive charge as current okay, yeah, is actually, you can see, going in the opposite direction from the where the electrons go. So the electrons, let's say, in this case, would be flowing to the right, but the charge would be flowing to the left, the current, you know, that would be flowing to the left. And that's all has to do with uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin. You know, he's the one that actually said that, you know, current is flowing in one way, and that was before they really knew about electrons. So when they did find that out, they found out electrons are actually going the opposite direction but it still works pretty much the same. Now, the person who kind of put two things together, one was Coulombs. Now, Coulombs, you know, is a physics idea, the amount of uh, charge, and moles of electrons, which is a chemistry idea. That was Michael Faraday who put that together. So he figured out that one mole of electrons, okay, which is a pretty normal amount for a chemist to use, is equal to 96,500 Coulombs of charge. And he just did that by doing an experiment, measuring the electricity going in, measuring the uh, chemicals coming out, and was able to get those two things put together. And we call that the Faraday constant, and we use that funny-looking F a lot of times for the Faraday constant. Now, interesting enough, if you go ahead and take Avogadro's number, okay, which we know is 6.02 times 10 to 23 moles of anything, and you take the, elect the charge on one electron, which is a tiny number of coulombs, and you multiply those two, then you end up with Faraday's constant. And that's not very surprising because we can say, you know, if you have the charge for one electron, well, what about the charge for a mole of electrons? That would just be a mole times the charge of one electron, and you end up with 96,500 coulombs per mole. Now, we can see this in a problem, and here's a problem from the 2013 uh, AP exam. And we're given an equation, and in this equation, the electrolytic cell uh, produces 235 grams of aluminum, according to this equation. So we want to calculate the number of moles of electrons that are transferred to make the 235 grams of aluminum. And then, if we had a 1 amp, uh, 152 amp circuit, then how long would that take in seconds to produce this 235 grams of aluminum? So you can see parts A and B are related. So let's go through this. And you can see what happens. First part, A, is very straightforward stoichiometry. So here we have, you know, 235 grams, the molar mass, 26.98 grams per mole. And because we can look at the equation, we know if we're going to be making aluminum from its ions, you know, aluminum 3 plus, we have to add 3 electrons. So that's going to turn into a conversion factor for us. 
that for every mole of aluminum we want to form, we need three moles of electrons. So when you use a third here, then 235 times 3 divided by 26.98, we get 26.1 moles of electrons that we would be transferring in order to make our 235 grams of aluminum. Now the second part, we're going to go back and use our I equals Q over T formula. And we're saying that I is 152 amps, and that's given in the problem. But for Q, now Q is the charge. We know that there are 26.1 moles of electrons, and we use the Faraday constant to change moles of electrons into coulombs. And when you multiply those two values, we get a huge number, 2,521,590 coulombs. So to finish this problem, we said we want the time in seconds. So instead of I equals Q over T, let's change that to T equals Q over I. Q we know is 2521590, way too many significant figures, coulombs, divided by the amps, which is 152 amps. And that's going to come out to be uh, 16598 seconds. Now we're really only working to three significant figures, so we could make that uh, 1.66 times 10 to the fourth seconds. And that would be a much more reasonable answer. So that's how long it would take to make 235 grams of aluminum. So again, we see here's a really useful formula, and this is the formula that's given on the AP exam. And in fact, this information here is given on the AP exam. So uh, I is the current in amperes, okay, and that's equal to charge over time, so coulombs per second. So one amp is a coulomb per second. And again, that relates to flow of electrons. So the, in this case here, if we're using our analogy of water, the charge is going to be the amount of water, okay, time is time, and current is the rate at which this is flowing. And because of Faraday, we can make a, a figure out the amount of charge if we know the number of moles of electrons. And that's a useful type of problem.